Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the, the Kings. Kings. Welcome back this week for another week's show. We truly thank you and appreciate you for joining us on today. But like we always do every week, we're going to thank our sponsors that support us. And please keep in mind, if you desire to be a sponsor of any of the shows on KRGN or just um, the radio station, please visit www.mykrgn.com because this is a listener-supported show and we would very much appreciate your seed of love. So we're going to go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors. First of all, we have Lucille Rohn. Lucille Rohn is a licensed clinical social worker who is also the author of Healing Military Wounds and she is the organizational founder of HIPVO, which is Honor and Truth Veteran Organization. If you would like to get more information about Lucille and all the wonderful things that she do for our active duty and veterans and families and the support that she provides, please visit www.hitvo.org. Also, we would like to show some love to an awesome group. This is a Facebook group, so we encourage you to go to Facebook and type in Christian Humor forward slash inspiration. This is not a site to condemn, belittle, or judge, but to come together to uplift each other with spiritual love and guidance and to bring some Christian humor. A happy heart is like good medicine, but a broken spirit drains your strength. And there, that is their focal scripture that comes from Proverbs chapter 17, verses 22. So what we're going to do now is take this time to open up with prayers we do every week so we can set this show off right as we go before the Lord. So as we ask, if you can hear the sound of our voice, we ask that you would just bow your heads with us and come in agreement with prayer and if you happen to be behind the vehicle please just keep us in your heart and minds but don't bow your head because we don't want no accidents most gracious heavenly father thank you so much again for this opportunity to come before your presence heavenly father thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to your people dear god we just pray and ask that anything that is said dear god is not condemning to anyone but that it would enlighten it would enrich it would uplift it would strengthen dear god in the name of jesus those marriages that are out there. We lift each and every marriage up to you right now, Heavenly Father. We ask that you would just have your way, dear God, that you would just do what need to be done to keep the marriages together, dear God, because we know that you are the creator of marriage, Heavenly Father. We ask, dear God, a special prayer for those, not only the marriages, but families, Heavenly Father, and our communities that we would come together, dear God, as one, we will become stronger, dear God, but we know that it all starts in the home and it all starts with marriages, dear God, for we know that stronger marriages lead to stronger families, which leads to stronger communities. We ask a special prayer for the radio station KRGN, dear God, that you would continue to just have your favor and mercy, dear God, on this radio station, that you would just continue to allow it to flourish as you see fit, dear God, that everything will be done decently in order unto you, dear God. We lift up each and every individual that come across the airwaves, dear God, that says what needs to be said, dear God, that you interject in their heart, dear God. We ask that we would just just continue to do your will and your way, dear God. And everyone that is listening in, we ask that you would just bless them even the more, dear God. And this show, we ask that it would just fall on good ground, Heavenly Father, that it will be deeply rooted so that way it will produce healthy marriages. In the name of Jesus, name we of pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so as always, as we open up our show, of course, my wife just uh, restated that in that prayer that she just did. And our motto is helping to build stronger marriages which leads to stronger families and indeed leads to stronger communities. So our foundational scripture for the show, Matthew, the 19th chapter, the sixth verse. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And so talking about that, we want to just do a little recap of last week's show. Last week's show, we talked about forms of abuse uh, in marriage and more often 
we think of that physical form of abuse. But last week, we kind of dived into some other forms as well. Uh, we talked about financial abuse. We talked about mental abuse, those words and things that we say that may abuse an individual, whether it be male or female within a marriage. And then we also kind of talked about, you know, what needs to be done to try to help yourself if you are being abused. Don't be afraid to speak out. Get some help. Oftentimes, individuals who are abusers may not actually know that they're being abusive. They may just think that's the way that they've seen things done and they think that that's right. So we gave an outlet for individuals to try to get the help that they need, not only if you're being abused, but if you are an abuser uh, yourself. And so today's topic, we're going to be talking about sex and marriage. Let's talk about it. Um, all too often, this subject is not brought up, you know. Um, so we're going to talk about different variations. We've also reached out to to awesome people who provided some great feedback. And so um, why they think things are when it comes to sex and marriage. And so we're going to be sharing that um, information as well. And so we always like to say that, you know, we do not know what anyone is going through in their marriage. No one's called us. No one's Facebooked us, uh, PM, DM, whatever you call that on social media. Um, so we don't know what you're going through, but we encourage you to take in that which is applicable to you and your life situation. And we pray that it will be a blessing. We always encourage people to just, you know, examine yourself and what's said. And so in marriage, husbands and wives, we ask you to examine yourselves. Now, keep in mind, our show and anything that we do is not just for married individuals. It's also for singles who desire to be married. There's nothing wrong with receiving education and knowledge and utilizing that when you do um, get married in the future. So we just want to put that out there as well. And so we have our marriage question of the day, which is... Our marriage question of the day is, why do people lose their desire for sex after marriage? Once again, why do people lose their desire for sex after marriage? And so what we're going to do uh, is kind of go back and forth with this. Uh, we have some uh, individuals who have actually contacted us uh, through social media. And uh, we'll just talk about some of these uh, reasons why individuals lose that desire for sex after marriage. Um, first and foremost, what comes to my mind is you have to think of some individuals may have specific health reasons. We know that as men and women age, uh, their bodies go through different changes, if you will. And so individuals, males, uh, females alike, you may have heart disease that affects um, your ability or your desire to have sex. Uh, individuals, uh, males that have erectile dysfunction, when uh, females go through menopause, when uh, both sexes may have uh, issues with diabetes, upper respiratory issues, uh, all of those health reasons to include some mental things that are there for maybe some things that could have happened to that individual sexually in the, in the past that caused some type of trauma could have an individual um, changing their desire uh, for sex within a relationship in a marriage. Okay, so what I would like to do is start off with um, the scripture. So if you have your Bible or your Bible apps, if you want to join in with us, I want to come from the Bible, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 2 through 6. And so I know those are many are accustomed that was raised under the church like we were to come from the K King James Version, the KJV. But I'm going to be reading it from the Message Version. Um, and so it reads, certainly, but only within a certain context. It's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in the world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. The husband seeking to satisfy his wife, the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other whether in bed or out. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it and if it's for the purpose of prayer and fasting, but only one for such time. Then come back together again. Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. I'm not, understand, commanding these periods of abstinence only providing my best counsel if you should choose them. And so I know we read that um, last week. I read the same passage of scripture, but also it's applicable for this week 
um, as well when it comes to what we should do as, as husbands and wives when it comes to marriage. And so I just wanted to, to first lay that foundation to come from the word of God of what is I asked this question in another form and I'm going to present it now. And it's just something for people to think about, you know, husbands and wives. Why is it? <laughs> why is it that before marriage? Oh, it's gold, teen sex and all this other stuff, which we have always been taught growing up in the church that, you know, sex is for uh, married couples. It's for husbands and wives. But why is it that it's teen sex before you get married? If we just keep it real, because see, some of us act like, Oh, holy it now and all this other stuff. Now let's just keep it all the way real, CNNlive.com, okay? But then after you get married, it's like, oh, no, I'm good. No, um, and like I said for some of the wives, oh, you got a headache. I'm going to need you to take some BCP. No, I'm just playing. Um, So why is that the case when it comes to after marriage? And I must admit, some of the comments and the feedback that we've received from individuals are very very i'm like wow you know very valid so we're gonna go ahead and talk about this thing um let's just keep it real you know and talk about it so one of the things that i thought about it, my wife was really hitting on that um as she was just speaking uh for a lot of individuals that desire for sex is diminished after you get married um because maybe you were very active before you got married and so, you know, sex is something that is meant for two individuals. Uh, it is meant for um, reproduction. It is meant for sexual intimacy within the relationship. But all too often, we think of a sex as being a casual thing, that I can have these relationships, have sex, do this and that uh, way before I get married. And then when you get married, you kind of burn out. Mm. And so if that person that you're married to is supposed to be that person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, that you're willing to do anything for, well, it seems like you just did everything for everybody else. And now you don't want to do anything for that person. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's good. Okay. So let's go to the comments. Let's go to the comments. Um, so we have a response from Colin. Okay. This will go along with what um, my husband was just saying. He says, complacency and familiarity. We have our eyes on the prize leading up to the marriage. And once we get the man or woman, there's a sense of fulfillment slash accomplishment. I think there are some striking resemblances between sex and physical fitness. Mm. Now that right there was really good. Yeah, that's a good one. Because I like how he was saying that you know, leading up to it, you got your eye on the prize. Let, let's keep it real. Let's go down memory lane, us husbands and wives right now. Even those who are in the quote-unquote court and coating stage, as we say from the country, you're dating each other. You're, you're engaged to be married. Now, if you think about it, now, ladies, I'm talking to the wives. Let me go ahead and talk to the wives. Baby, when your husband was chasing you, child, you was looking super fine. You heard me? You made sure your hair was right. You made sure you brushed your teeth. You made sure that that you was, every time you seen him, man, you was like a top-notch prize. But then, after we get married, what happened to all that? <laughs> what happened? You know, can we be honest? And so I can see where Colin is coming from saying about, um, you have your eye on the prize. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it is for men or, you know, well, I say men before husband because, you know, if you husband, y'all married. But, but baby, how is it for men when it may be a possibility that in, in, in Colin's statement, there may be a possibility that there's maybe two or three men, you know, that got their eye on the prize, which is that young lady how I mean, how is like what would you give? What's your feedback to what Colin said? I would say it goes mutual for males and females. Um, okay. Oftentimes, individuals look at a person and they say, "Well, when it comes to sexual desire, um, this is what I want to do for that person. Mm -hmm. I'm all into this. I have to let this person know uh, how good I am in bed, uh, how intimate I can be." Uh, for them to be able to like me and to maybe you know feel a sense of um, self-esteem they're building their self-esteem up and then once those individuals you know later get married 
or later on in the relationship, it's like, well, I've already got the prize. I don't have to put that much effort into it. Mm. And like I said, I think it goes for males and females as well. But, you know, I had a list of things I had prepared, and that one came kind of far down on my, my list, but it kind of ties in with it. It says you p- quit putting effort into sex in your marriage. So you yeah. have to understand whatever you put in mm-hmm. is what you're going to put out. So mm-hmm. if you want sex to be a very intimate, passionate thing in your relationship, then you've got to be willing to put a lot into it. And sometimes that means putting aside your own uh, wants, uh, desires, and pleasures for that uh, other individual. Mm-hmm. So think of uh, sex in the sense in your marriage like a bank account. You can't go down to the bank and put in a penny and expect to draw out a million dollars. Come on, brother. Come on, man. Look, I didn't mean to cut you off, Miss Kingdom. Boy, you be busting them in the head with these good old analogies. You right. Don't don't be going down there. Y'all know your bank account in a negative trying to, you know, and I hope I'm not busting up your little list over here because I see your little list. But um, I going in line with what you're saying, I think that it comes to what do you deem is important? Mm-hmm. What do you deem is important? You know, like Colin was saying in his comment, um, it gets me because don't get me wrong, you get married, you got your job, you have your children, you run in the thousand. We as married couples, after we get married, tend to put more effort into everything else than we do our marriage. Mm-hmm. Now we'll say, oh, okay, well I might say, oh, can you not go in anywhere because I married him, you know, I done had his children, whatever the case may be. But I see too all too often, and I used to say this when we was in the military, baby, you remember this? <laughs> when I was stationed here in Fort Hood, I remember when we used to be in formation, and I, I you know, apologize to those who don't understand that are not military, but Kind of follow me. When we used to be in formation at the end of the work day and they would not release us and we didn't know if we was going home at 1800, which was 6 p.m., 1900, you know, we sitting up here waiting to go see our families. And I and people used to complain and say, why are we still in formation? And I would say, oh, that joker got problems at home. I already knew that. Mm-hmm. And so I say all that to say so everybody can relate to it is that when you're not willing to put... 100% each person. It ain't no 50-50. It's mm-hmm. 100 100. When you're not willing to put 100% in your marriage, then your marriage is going to lack that intimacy, that sex. It's going to lack it because you're going to put it on the back burner. You got people who their jobs come before their marriage, their children come before their marriage, mm-hmm. their church. Yep. Huh. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Yes. Come before their marriage. Um, their their uh, businesses come before their marriage. And were you having your husband or your wife or, or that longs that intimacy? Not it, it, it don't always have to be sex 24-7, but they long that intimacy to spend time with you. And, and they want, or let's say, example, want to, I bring it lighter, want to go out on a date with you. You're like, oh, baby, well, I got to do this on that day. And I got to do this on that day. And then you penciling in your husband and your wife. But, baby, hey, you were not penciling in your husband and wife before you said I do. Yep. When you was dating them. Oh, no. Everything else got pushed to the back burner because you was too busy trying to obtain that prize, which was your husband or your wife. But then when you've conquered that goal, then your husband and your wife go to the back burner? And you wonder why the sex is tripping? Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, Mr. King, your turn, brother. Yep. And so, you know, it goes back to what Colin had said that, you know, a lot of times we compare uh, there's a good resemblance between uh, sex and, and physical fitness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my wife was kind of alluding to that. You know, sometimes when it comes to that physical aspect of individuals taking care of their bodies, you know, people say, well, I want to lose 10, 15 pounds, whatever the case may be. Uh, they lose that 10 or 15, they keep it around for a minute and say, hey, I'm there, and then you just let it go after that mm, because you true. wanted to look good for you know a certain time frame uh, or for a certain occasion uh, for your oh. husband or your spouse. And see, I see that a lot because the individuals will say, well, you know, during the winter, I'm going to do this, that, and the other, and then right before spring, I'm going to get my body in shape because I want to look good for the summer. Mm-hmm. Now, the issue that I have with that, there's no problem with you trying to get your body in shape or however you want to get, say, tight and right for the summer. But if I'm not mistaken, when you married, you married uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Mm-hmm. So why are you only doing something for your husband and your wife at certain times? Or even a better question, who are you really doing it for? Oh, 
Because sometimes, you know, we have to think about Ooh. people think that they have to look good in other individuals' eyes. Well, you know, I'm one to tell you, if, if I'm not looking good first and foremost in, in my wife's eyes, I care less about anybody Come else. On, brother. That's you the person that. that I'm coming home to at night. Yes. That's the person that I have to please. So I don't have time to worry about what other individuals think. That is true. Okay. So. We have uh, Lynette who says, for many, life gets in the way. When you're dating, you carve out time to be with one another. For married people, that oftentimes doesn't happen. And that's true. That goes in line with what, what we were saying. You carve out time. You make time. And then this is something that I just don't understand. You neglect your husband or your wife. Okay? But then soon as the night fall. Then what? What a bishop used to call it. Then you all about that ten o'clock wonder. Ain't mm -hmm. that what he used to call it? Yep. You about that ten o'clock wonder. You tapping on my shoulder, but you ain't been stud me all day. You ain't been stud me all week, but then you want to tap on my shoulder. You know I'm gonna go ahead and say it like this because I did share this in another forum. The late Dr. Miles Monroe. The late Dr. Miles Monroe. I encourage you all to go to YouTube and Google what he says about husband and wife and stuff. That word that that man of God was bringing was something kind of powerful and it was all kind of true. And, and, and he said that, um, if I'm paraphrasing correctly, that men are attracted by what they see and women are attracted by what they hear. Men are attracted by what they see and women are attracted by what they hear. So basically what I took from what he was saying in that is that men, of course, yes, physical beings. That's how God created them. You know, I know sometimes and I ain't trying to be all personal, put it out there. And I encourage y'all to keep y'all mind on your own wife and husband when I talk like this. But sometimes my husband may ask me to wear, you know, a certain outfit when we go out to dinner or, you know, certain occasion or if we're going on a date or anniversary or you know, on vacation or something like that. Now, this is where I got a, a problem now, not with my husband now. I don't understand. Like my husband was just saying, we just got to keep it real. We are more apt to do something for somebody else than we are our own husband or our wives. When they ask us to do something, they ask us to do something or wear something, we got a problem. And I remember a conversation me and my husband had and um, when he asked me to wear something, I didn't feel comfortable putting it on because ladies, if we can keep it real, sometimes we feel kind of fluffy. And that's what I'm going to call it, fluffy. You know, so you don't feel like you're sexy anymore. You done had all these bobblehead kids that's running around and you just don't feel sexy anymore. But what we got to get down to and going back to what Dr. Miles Monroe said, if your husband finds you attractive in that manner and he's asking you to do it, then do it. You know what I'm saying? That's something I've had to learn over these past almost 19 years. But we're more apt to jump and do it for somebody else. We're more apt to lose weight to do for somebody else. And then we're wondering why it's lacking when it comes to that 10 o'clock wonder. And that joker tapping on your shoulder. Now on the flip side, husbands, that means you need to get to sweet, speaking some sweet nothings in your wife's ear. And not just at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You need to keep that thing going, keep that fire burning. I'm going to need you to be like that image on Tom and Jerry back in the day when the fireplace where they had that little, what's that thing, baby, where they was pumping the air on the fire? Yeah, they used to use it for a blacksmith too. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to need you to go ahead and make that happen. Don't be trying to talk something at some 10 o'clock. Joker, you better be You better be talking, texting. Oh, you fine. You better be saying that all before 10 o'clock and you tapping on somebody's shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And so one of the things that I wanted to hit on, I know we're talking about uh, married couples a lot. And, you know, to go back and, and talk to the singles uh, for a moment, um, you know, the Bible uh, has many different occurrences of where individuals who are not married should refrain from sex. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to ask our, uh, the, ourselves a question, why is that? Yeah. Well, you know, sex is something that you, you look forward to. Mm -hmm. Sex is something that you should look forward to because it's something to be enjoyed by married individuals for the purpose, like I said before, to reproduce and to also create that intimacy that is meant to be shared between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes individuals who are not married, they have sex on a regular with, you know, uh, another partner. It could be multiple partners and you don't feel that same way about sex that you do when you get married. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because that intimacy, that trust, uh, that passion that should be there, you've, you've kind of given it away. And now because you've 
you know, been active so much and you've put yourself out there, it's not there in that same manner for that person that it should have been there for. You, sure. It's not there to enjoy as much as it is because you're just looking at it as just sex. It's just lust. But if you hold yourself out, hold out for that individual that God puts in your path, then it becomes more than just sex. It becomes that intimacy. It becomes that passion. It becomes that thing that you look forward to because you want to share that time with that person that you have waited on. And so for a lot of individuals, they say, well, I need to try something out before um, I know I need to buy it. You know, you do that with cars and stuff. <laughs> exactly. And a house. Yeah. <laughs> you go through and make sure that the house is going to be a good fit uh, for you when, before you buy it. You want to make sure that your financing is right, that the rooms are going to accommodate, you know, what you need them for. When it comes to sex and marriage, that's something that you and your husband or you and your wife need to explore together. Yes. Because, you know, it, it's almost like doing a hobby. If you and your spouse get together and do a hobby, it may not seem like, you know, y'all going to get it all together at first. Mm -hmm. You can't bake that cake right. It comes out lopsided. Uh, you didn't uh, let the cake cool down long enough to get to get that icing on it but the more you work with each other on that then in the end that cake is the bomb yeah that's it's, true. it's sweet the icing is good mm -hmm. uh the cake is is leveled out it's formed right and then you enjoy what you have made together yes. but when you're out there just doing whatever with anybody everything is not gonna be all peachy and, and and happy in the end that's true and you know speaking on that since um um, I also um, sit down with ladies and stuff like that and, and hear from women. All too often, I hear women say the same thing. Okay, first of all, ladies, single ladies, I need us to understand this. You are, you are single and you were, us as women are created to be emotional beings. So we can't get upset, like my husband was saying, and there's no judgment. It's just something to think about for yourself because, we, you know, I don't know what you're going through. But you can't get upset when you're leaving a piece of yourself with everyone that you slept with because you was hoping that that individual was going to be the one that was going to be your bow ass. I did everything. I cooked for that joker, cleaned for that joker, was taking care of him. You was basically letting him be your husband and acting that quote-unquote role as your husband without having a ring and that commitment before God. But then I often hear, you know, women in tears, they crying, oh, I'm hurt because I can't believe he did me like that. He was cheating on me with so-and-so. But if there's no commitment before the act, then what you crying for? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being straight up honest. Y'all know me. I'm the more blunt one. What you crying for? When, when my husband said that you have that, that you explore with each other, you know, then that's when what God has created, he created that as, as uh, an enjoyment between husbands and wives. But when there is no commitment that's connected to what God created for us to have as husbands and wives, then you can't get mad at the person that you're willingly giving yourself to in hopes that he will commit. No, that's backwards. Mm -hmm. It's backwards. But um, go ahead, Miss Kim. And then, you know, the last thing I, I throw out there for, for the singles and, and what we're trying to get you guys to understand is we're not bashing you. We're not beating you down. We are trying to get you to understand some basic uh, guidelines that you probably should be going by because it will keep you from going through a lot of hurt and pain uh, potentially in the end. Mm -hmm. And so First uh, Corinthians um, 6, chapter 19, verse says, do you not know your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, mm -hmm. whom you have received from God, you are not your own. So that thing can be broken down there in two different ways. From a marriage aspect, you're not your own. You're not supposed to be withholding yourself from your spouse. But the first part is what I really want to hit on and bring this home for the singles. Do you not know your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? See, early on in the uh, early days of the Bible, in the Old Testament, everybody couldn't come into the temple. You're right. Say that, brother. Everybody couldn't come into the temple. Mm -mm. The temple was a sacred place. And so ladies and also men, if you're single, even if you're not single, realize that your body is a sacred place. Everybody can't come into it. That's true. That is meant for someone who deems you, and I'll just go there from a, a man's point of view to a woman, that is for a person who deems you as being holy. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. the women, you are telling that man that, he's accepting you as being holy and that he's righteous in what he's going to be getting when you guys are married and enjoy each other. Mm, wow. 
And so it is not for everybody. You know, it is just like um, hobbies, if you will. Everybody's not into guns. Everybody's not into motorcycles. So your body should be the same way. Everybody can't be into it. Uh, okay, commercial break, commercial break. <laughs> wow, let us go ahead and go to this commercial break, Lord. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our little break that we do every week, and then we're going to go ahead and get through this little commercial break real quick so we can get back to segment two of the show. Okay, so we would like to thank those who support Marriage Mondays with the Kings and also give a shout out to those who are celebrating anniversaries or correction who celebrated anniversaries in this past week yes and so uh once again we really love and we want to thank everyone who supports uh marriage mondays with the kings uh but on today's show we want to send a big shout out to shanisha barksdale of silas mississippi hey, uh, she's one of the faithful listeners to us and also zoraida Cheryl of Fredericksburg, Virginia. She support us. Thank yes, you. thank you so much. And then right here in the Central Texas area, a really good friend of ours, Joe Levine from hey, Conference Joe. Cove, Texas. So thank <laughs> all of you, not only those three, but everyone who supports Marriage Mondays with the Kings. And so now we want to move into our anniversaries, and we just want to be able to let you know that this is something that we thoroughly like to do. Yes. It is a blessing to hear that individuals are holding on to their marriage Amen. whether they've been married for one month or a hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into that, we want to uh, send a shout out to Matt and Jasana Mosley of Fort Hood, Texas, married four years on June the 6th. Happy anniversary. Yes. Also to Andre and Veronica Chapman of Groveton, Georgia, uh, celebrated their anniversary on June the 7th. Yes. To Richard and Lisa Lopez of Coppers Cove, Texas, uh, celebrating their anniversary on June the 8th. Eight. Congratulations! And then this this is a good one. We we love Come to on. we love to see it when individuals have been married for one minute. But I'm telling you, for 44 years, 44, Jesus. 44. So we yes. want to send a special shout out to Mark Hay and Mildred Ross of Killeen, Texas, married 44 years. Woo! On June the 19th. Yes. 44 years on June the 19th. <laughs> and so also to Anthony and Melissa Curtis of Colleen, married seven years on June the 10th. And then Mark and Susan Moore of San Antonio, Texas, yes. married 34 years, 34 years on June the 10th. Come on, y'all. So once again, we just want to send a shout out to all those individuals celebrating our anniversaries. And we pray that God continues to bless you and keep you in everything that you do and hope that he gives you many more anniversaries to come. Yes. And so um, happy anniversary, everybody. And so like we always do, you know, our motto is um, stronger marriages, which leads to stronger families and stronger communities. And so we encourage you, get out into your community. I don't know what's going on in the world today where people are isolating themselves, don't want to deal with each other and things like that. I just believe that's a trick of the enemy. Get out and support. There are uh, plenty of avenues. Go on Eventbrite and search in your city or your zip code where you are. Find out what's going on. Get them kids out the house. Get them kids out in front of them electronics and get out and support the things in your community. Now, when you do, we encourage you to use hashtag we are better together. Although we love that hashtag. I'm thinking of we need to do unity in the community. Mm. Oh, I like that one too. And so use hashtag we are better together. If you put anything on social media, I don't care if you're talking about you and your honey. I don't care if you're talking about a couple that just got married family time with your family business events just supporting each other use the hashtag we are better together and promote that on your social media i'm so tired of cutting up news and saying all this negative we can overcome that when we come together and support each other and so get out and support your local businesses your mom and pop shops and things of that nature. Now, I know some of you all, um, I encourage you all, if you haven't already, go to our Facebook page, Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Search that, okay? Some of y'all might say, look here now, every Monday, I'm looking forward to listening to y'all. We get a lot of awesome feedback, praise, and thank God, glory be to God, none goes to us. 
but praise and thank God for the feedback that you give us when we see y'all on the street. You know, mention Marriage Mondays with the King so we can take a selfie with you and yes. put it um, on our social media pages. And thank you for the support and all our silent supporters. Thank y'all too. Maybe, you know, your marriage is going through and you don't want to tell anybody that you be listening to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. As long as that word getting to you, that's all that matters. But... And saying that, go to our Facebook page. I also do Marriage Mornings with the Queen. That's a little more realistic and intense than Marriage Mondays with the Kings, Monday through Friday. And so, in saying all that, we want to go ahead and show our love as we do every week for KRGN, Kingdom Revelation Gospel Network. That's what that stands for. So if you have that good old KRGN app, don't be stingy. Share with somebody else and tell them, look, you want to listen to this station because it's very rare that we have gospel stations that are 24 hours that have gospel music, jazz, um, inspiration that'll really help you make it through your day. So don't only just download the app for yourself. It's a blue and white app in your app store. Teach somebody else. Reach one, two, or three. That's what they used to say in church when I was growing up. Now, we want to go ahead and show some love for our overseers as we do every week. Pastor and First Lady Gilchrist, thank you so much, man and woman of God. We truly appreciate you for being the overseers. And then for the radio show owners, Mr. Ron and his beautiful wife, Mimi Grace, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all that you all do um, and the sacrifice that it takes to have this radio station going because, you know, most people don't know unless they're doing it. And then all the radio personalities of KRG, and when I tell you these are some awesome, hilarious, inspirational, uplifting people, we've met them, and they are so awesome. And the sacrifice that it takes to go before God to get Yes. To receive the word, you know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. God wants you to share with people. You may think it's easy and fun, but it's not always easy when God calls you to do that and you have no choice but to do it so you won't end up like Jonah in the well. And so we're going to go ahead and get back into the second segment of um sex and marriage. Let's talk about it. We're keeping it real. So if you just joining us, you know, this is very much G-rated, but it's very much real. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and get on back into this show so we can finish out the second segment of the show. So, babe, you want to comment? Do you want me going ahead with these comments we received? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in there. One that I've been... Um kind of looking around to get a little information on that, you know, we can use material on the show. And, and I can't reference this back because it did not have an individual's name on it, but this could be geared towards individuals who are single, uh, looking to get married and you're having that issue or that problem of a, hey, should I wait and, and abstain uh, from sex before marriage? Well, you know, the number one thing you should be going by is the Bible. And it says that you should refrain uh, from sex until you're married. But I, I found this quote and I really wish that I could be able to reference it, but it does not have a name with it. But it says safe sex. If you're going to make love with a person whom you love so much, do it wearing the safest thing, a wedding ring. Oh, I like that. Read that again. Once read again, that again, it says safe <laughs> sex. If you're going to make love with a person who you love so much, do it wearing the safest thing, a wedding ring. I'm going to leave that one right there. Drop some mics, walls off stage. Oh, okay. Drop mic, drop mic. I got you. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and give comments. Um, so we have Tracy who said, I'm still going through the process. The story is still being written. However, it's like, you know, because we're, um, for those who are just joining in, let me backtrack for a minute. Um, we we're asking, we we're talking about sex and marriage. And so that's what we were talking about in the first part of the show and just bring it. Why is it that, you know, it fizzles out after you get married? We put this question out, um, to our supporters. And so, tr um, Tracy, Mr. Tracy says, I'm still going through a process. The story is being written. However, it's like, you know, so much so much do so much but when the title changes everything changes in my opinion i would say it's about keeping the relationship how you want it to be you have to guide your partner to the same way you lead Ooh, that's like dancing hmm. all right okay i got it i got that one um and so i wanted to go ahead now this one was really um i like thought provoking comments so this is from sheila and she says in many instances sex is what initially brings the two together 
the longer you're married without even verbally saying so you realize that those um those are i am moments like caring for each other and being there when you most need someone going through those difficult times together and just overcoming life's obstacles have brought you closer than sex ever could just some of my thoughts on the subject wow that's a good one that is really good you know and i I can agree with that uh some individuals think that it's, it's all about uh the sex but you know like i was talking in the beginning of the show there's some health reasons why a person may not be able to engage in sex or they may lose their desire for sex so what do you have to hold on to if there's no sex in the marriage Oh, that's good. So those things that Sheila was talking about, you know, those times that you spend together, those date nights, uh, those vacations that you may go on, the things that you do while you're raising your children and enjoying your family, those are things that you can hold on to forever, you know, while sex may fizzle out and go left because of medical or mental uh, issues. So, yeah, I can definitely understand that. Hmm. And especially, you know, you have some people who, in that regards, they – they make it a priority. They make it a priority number one um, in the marriage. And so too often what I've seen is that when that's the case and it's not going the way you want it to in marriage, then you just um, like the scripture. Let me go on back to the scripture. Let me go on because somebody be saying I'm trying to put the business out there and I don't even know it. Satan in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2 through 6, and I'm reading latter part close to the 6. Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. And this is coming from the Message Bible. And so that's pretty much the truth. It Because if we keep it real, when you going through your ups and downs in your marriage, okay, why does it seem like that's when the perfect quote unquote or what appears to be perfect, the false perfect, uh, what is uh, alternative facts? Mm-hmm. That's what the president say. Um, that, that's when the alternative facts seem to present itself as the perfect opportunity when things are not going right in your marriage. And so when saying that, since we're talking to sex, talking about sex, then it seemed like, oh, I'm, I'm not getting her at home. And then all of a sudden you got this, this pretty young thing that come around or vice versa, men or women, mm-hmm. and they're knocking at your doorstep, and you right there trying to open up the door. No, I'm gonna need you to close look, the door, okay? My country came. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to close that door. That's what I'm gonna need you to do and work on our marriage. We gotta get back to that. So mm-hmm. we can't use that as an excuse. And then after that, trust has been broken because when you have your marriage between husband and wife, that's a bond of trust right there that is trust so when you have that trust that's been broken you can't expect your husband or your wife to easily say oh just get over you know to, to forgive you oh get over it that was so long time ago no 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 if we work on the home fires now and keep the home fires burning and we make each other husbands and wives the priority then we won't have to worry about satan coming in and tempting us as the word of god says mm-hmm. and so you know Getting uh, back to like the questions, why do we do lose desire for sex, you know, after marriage uh, for some individuals? And I know my wife had hit on this. It's a self-esteem uh, issue. You know, we, we feel especially some women, uh, they have children. Uh, they say that their body is not a certain way that it was before they had children. So it becomes a self-esteem uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and True. then sometimes we have to look at it for a lot of relationships. Sex is just the same old, same old. Yeah. And you know, th- this is an adult show. I hope I'm not getting too far out there, but it's the same thing every single time. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you have to be willing to do a little something extra. Like I said, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of. And there are a lot of godly ways that you can enjoy each other. Godly. Uh, enjoy each other without doing the same old, same old. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to understand, you know, your um, people sometimes are afraid of change but change is good yeah yeah change is good you know sometimes we laugh at children because they they will ask you the question uh you ask them the question you know which would you rather have this dollar or a quarter and then you know when the child picks the quarter most people think well they're picking it because it's shiny it catches their attention but you have to understand if you get that child a dollar they may only uh, get that once but if you keep pulling out quarters, how much is that going to add up to? That's true. That is so true. That is so true. And so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, repeat something that I've said before. Um, I'm going to talk to my, 
my fellow church folks, you know, um, I, I, I don't understand. Growing up in the church, you used to hear, and this is as a child, you hear about how you needed to basically take care of your Jerusalem, mm. um, meaning you needed to take care of your home. And, you know, in the first segment of the show, we were talking about how how married couples, we make, um, when life starts happening, we make everything else a priority above our husband and our wife who we married to after we married them. And so in another um, forum, I had mentioned how I don't understand how 50% of the divorces are in, um, that 50% of the divorces are church folks. Mm -hmm. And I say, I don't understand that. And I'm telling you, I forever praying, asking questions, getting people's input and stuff like that. Well, where it used to be taught now, I don't know. I can't speak for every church, but where it used to be taught that you need to take care of your Jerusalem, baby, you better go home to your husband, baby, you better quit leaving your husband at home 24 seven by himself. You need to minister, mm -hmm. minister to your husband, husbands, you need to minister to your wife, minister to your home, minister in the bedroom. A lot of people not doing that. You too busy doing everything else. You're going to this conference, this convocation, this, this, and this, this seminar. Oh, I got to go get this. I got to get back with the canker worm. St stole you better get back to your bedroom with your husband and your wife did shan just say that yes i did pray for me okay but i'm just gonna keep it real because if we don't take care of the home we can't sp expect anybody else outside of the home to take care of our home i'm just saying and that goes for financial that goes for sexual that goes for emotional get back to the basics in your marriage get back to that dating that's why we always say date Spend time with your honey and cut that dog on phone off. Them electronic devices. Leave the electronic watch at home. You ain't got to be glued to the world 24-7. And for most of us, if we was glued more to our husbands and our wives like that, we wouldn't be having 50% of divorces. Wow, that's I'm good. Saying. Hey, you know, she was saying that, and that hits right along with something uh, that I wrote down. You know, you have to be able to minister uh, to your husband and your wife at home. You take care of your Jerusalem. That is your first ministry that you should be taking care of and you know a lot of individuals may may get upset by it but it is what it is you take care of your home first before you take care of stuff outside the home and that may be including your role at the church yeah you know it's, it's just a, a fact you take care of your home you minister to your home and then you move outside of that so the, the little thing that i wrote down as my wife was saying that i'm like man she's jumping all over that stomping it down the but it's okay one, baby the two are but one, but it, it kind of goes back to uh <laughs> Uh, some of the old school sayings that people would say that, you know, if, if you kept uh, your husband fed, uh, you know, that was the way to his heart. But mm -hmm. I kind of put a spin on that. Say, if you feed your spouse at home, then he or she won't have to go out to eat. G Ooh. Ooh, say that again. So ooh, if you ooh, feed ooh. your spouse at home, then he or she won't have to go out to eat. Oh. So once again, take care of things at home. And we're not saying these things to be hurtful in anyone's spirit. And we're not mm -hmm. trying to go, uh, to a negative side or negative connotations, but it's just true facts. You have to take care of things at home. Yes. And then maybe that won't spill over into these other things. Like my wife was talking about the 50% of uh, divorces coming from individuals in the church. Yes. Uh, another thing that I think we need to take a look at is quit being selfish. Ooh. You know, sometimes we want to refrain from sex for our, from our spouse because we think, well, he or she didn't buy me this, or they didn't let me go do this. But he, they go want this. That's true. They if go want wrong, this. You are and wrong to That is shoes. not the way that it's supposed to be. You're you're not the governor, if you will, of your own body. Yes. In other words, you're causing separation there. And as we say on the radio show all the time, um, is Matthew nineteen and six, the two are now one. Yes. So anytime that you're driving something between that, you're not one anymore. You're becoming two. You're start, you're causing separation and division that is there. And then another thing, just want to hit on it real quick. And this is not in a negative manner, but sometimes people lose that intimacy or that desire for sex after marriage because you've gotten together, you've had a few kids, kids are in the house and you can't truly enjoy yourself, if you will, like you did before when the kids weren't in the house. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make provisions for that. Sometimes you may need to get a babysitter, you yeah. know, if you're going to enjoy yourselves in that manner, because we understand parents are being respectful to their children in the home. And so sometimes the children may be that factor as to why you're not really able to enjoy each other um, 
sexually like you used to. Okay, baby, let me bounce on some real quick that you said. I ain't gonna say piggyback because you know people wear that word out. But let me bounce on some. This is something that I learned. And I'm not trying to be mean, you know, I'm not knocking against the church. That's not our purpose and stuff. We, yeah, we still, we love the Lord. He heard our cry and everything. But something that I remember hearing, uh, and I see that people do, and it's not just even in the church. This is just period. So I'm going to use this example. Say my husband want me to wear something, right? And of course, I'm going to be tasteful and, you know, things like that, carry myself like his queen, you know, because the queen carry herself. Come on, ladies. We carry ourselves in a, in a, in a, in a, as a queen, you know? And so it's something because what we allow people to do is condemn us. Prime example, if my husband want me to wear his favorite outfit, he like to see me in. But then when I go somewhere, I got to hear, girl. Girl, why you look like that? Girl, did you see so-and-so? You see what she had on? Now, I ain't talking about where you flashing for. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about a nice, conservative outfit. It trips me out because people have problems, and they're quick to condemn something that they're not able to do themselves. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what gets me. And that right there can cause hindrances in marriage. If I'm on a date with my husband and I want to look cute for my husband, and doggone it, I'm going to look cute for my husband. Just because you're not looking cute for yours, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. So what we need to understand as husbands and wives, if I tell my husband, baby, you sure is looking sexy, brother. You are a chocolate brother. Whatever the case may be, I don't want to hear nobody else having it in his head. Why your wife always telling you that? You need to tell them that they need to sweep around their own front porch. That's what mm, the word of God says. Like the front porch. Don't be studying what we do. <laughs> oh, Lord, I done went country again. Don't be worried about what we doing over here in the king's household when Mr. King is the one paying the bills. That's what I'm saying. We allow other people. So if that's what we do to lead to that 10 o'clock wonder, then don't be worried about what we got going on over here. People are always so quick to condemn somebody else. And the, the ones who were condemning me at that particular time were individuals that was in the church. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just keeping it real. Quit putting your mouth on other people unless you're trying to pray for them or build them up. Mm-hmm. Mr. King. Yep. And then another reason why some individuals uh, lose their desire for sex after marriage uh, has to deal with, with stress. Uh, sometimes we're so caught up in trying to do everything at work, in the church, with kids at school, mm-hmm. uh, athletic things that are going on. Maybe you're involved in the community and you're trying to do something and your body is so stressed out that it has that negative reaction and you just don't have that desire anymore that you need to be able to just relax and enjoy your spouse. And so with that, you know, it's like my wife said, we have to learn how to prioritize. Let's let's get things together and decide, you know, what's more important. Do I need to take care of things at home and then move towards those things outside? Take care of that physical need uh, that you have uh, for yourself. And then another reason why uh, individuals may have that uh, lose that desire for sex. Uh, we, we talked about self-esteem and how a person may view themselves, but sometimes we as husbands and wives, we've got to quit comparing our, our spouses to other individuals. Yes. Yeah, you have to watch what you say. Um, and, and I'll just I'll give you a, a quick example. These are things that people may do unknowingly, not thinking that it may cause some type of damage, but it really does. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could go to a movie and you can see a particular actor or actress wearing something that most people may deem as being sexy. And you may wish to comment like, woohoo, oh, baby, I wish you could wear something like that. Yeah, that's 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 ugly. And then, that's you ugly. know, you're you're thinking of it as being a comment like, oh, you know, I want to see you in that. But like you said, a compliment. yeah, but it is it's not. And Don't so, sleep on the couch. yeah, those little things like that. <laughs> could really hurt a person's self-esteem because you're comparing that individual to someone else. Uh, the, the thing about it, I think I've said this on the, on the um, show before, is that you married that individual that you're with. So why are you always comparing them to somebody else? That's true. Now, that I, ain't sexy. Yeah, now I'm just going to tell you, you know, we, we said at the beginning of the show, I think the very first show that we did, that we like to be a little open sometimes. Transparent, and baby. And my, my wife had to snap me back into reality um, while we were dating. And she will tell you, I used to have these pictures of individuals up on my uh, wall Mm -hmm. and it was female uh, R&B artists, um, 
Mariah Models, Carey. Mariah Carey, <laughs> Janet Jackson, <laughs> Stacey Dash. It was just a bunch of people that I thought were very good looking individuals. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, why do you have them up if you're talking to me? I said, well, baby, it's, it's just pictures. It's not that big of a deal. And she said, okay, let, let's, let's look at this. I said, okay, what's that? She said, think about it. Think mm -hmm. about it. Do you ever think you're really going to meet those individuals? Yes, Lord. And I said, well, that's a possibility, but probably not. And she said, okay. And do you ever think that they're going to want you? And I... Yeah. I wasn't trying to be mean. Yeah, she wasn't, understand. but she was. I had a pinky toe in the church back then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she told me that. And, and I thought about that one night. And then the next time that she came to visit, it, w it was gone. Because yeah. I realized that if I'm... After one person, which the wife, the person I'm chasing, and boy, was I running. You, uh, shut up. How do you start? <laughs> but anyway, uh, if I'm after one person, why am I co so concerned about these other individuals and how they dress and what they look like? I had to learn for myself that even while we were dating, I have to take care of the prize that I'm trying to get even before that because it says a lot while you're dating yeah. as to what you will do in your relationship. That is true. That's true. Now, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and um, Chadwick gave a comment that, that I, I believe is so true. And this could probably lead. I think we didn't answer our married question of the day. And I thought of the week. We, we might as well just carry this out until it's almost time to end the show. Because what he said is so true. He said, marriage is the finish line of effort to prove you want each other. Mm. People aren't taught what happens during the marriage. That is so true. Yep. They expect the same type effort, but you are in a different phase. So being in a marriage, we expect the same effort that was given while dating, which is true. Yep. But you are in a different phase of life because you're introducing marriage. You got children. We discussed all that. But what I like most about what he said is people aren't taught what happened during marriage. If you look at society today, nobody's teaching you about, I, heck, I remember growing up as a kid, they used to teach you about, you know, sex, safe sex, and sex is between, you know, well, when I was growing up, sex is between husband and wife, blah, blah, blah. You don't get none of that today. Sex is so willy-nilly. It's just like another word, just like love, which people confuse with lust. You just toss, toss it around. Yes, mm -hmm. but people are not teaching about marriage, and this is what get me. You know, with the kings, you either like us or you don't. That's just what it is. But you can't get mad at us when we agreed on our very first show that we had to be transparent to help marriage, and God is using us and allowing us to do this. You can't get mad if we're telling the truth. Because we don't have, like I often say, those papas, medias, big mamas, grannies. We don't have them teaching truth, passing it down in the generation. We don't have people telling us, this is what you have to do to please your man. I used to hear that growing up. You don't hear people saying that now. You hear people say, if I can keep it real, this is what you have to do to take somebody, to be with somebody else's man, or be with somebody else's wife, which is not of God. But you don't have that true reality of this is what you have to, baby, don't worry about what people say about you and what you were and how you do. We don't have that. We do not have that. You don't have any people even teaching the bedroom is underfouled anymore. I ain't even heard that in the sermon and I don't know how long. So, and that's in the church. You know what I'm saying? We need to get back to the responsibility of teaching people what a marriage is like, and maybe we will have more successful marriages. All right, Mr. King, we got three minutes left. What you got? Yeah, so one quick thing I want to throw out there. You know, it may seem like we're really coming down hard on some individuals in relations to sex and the marriage, whether you're married or whether you're a single. Uh, the thing about it is this. Regardless of where you're at right now in, in your walk, in being single or being married, what you've done in the past is in the past. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to condemn yourself for things that you may or may yes, not have done. So you true. have room to get that right and be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest ways that I can show you with this was actually, I want to say it was John the eighth chapter where Jesus was talking with the adulterous woman who was caught in an affair and they were getting ready to stone her. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing that he uh, asked uh, the individuals that was there is that let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yes. Nobody could throw a rock. So right now, if you're going now. through something, nobody can throw a rock at you. 
Yes. Nobody can throw a rock at you. And then what Jesus said at the end that I really like, he says, go from now on and sin no more or go ye therefore and sin no more, which means you've got an opportunity to put the past behind you Mm -hmm. and move forward. Amen. So uh, a lot of individuals uh, look at this because you have individuals who had children while they were in high school or out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. Your situation isn't always what... uh, it's not always going to be that way. You have the, mm-hmm. the time and the opportunity to change that situation. So knowing that we've answered that question about uh, sex and marriage and why the desire is often lost, then now we know the things we need to do to rebuild that so that that desire isn't lost and know that you have time to make up for, if you will, or to move on for those things that maybe you got wrong and move forward to being right. Amen. So that right there actually concludes our show, everyone. Oh my God, the time has flown. So we ask that you join us next week and we will be discussing topics and questions such as today. Fighting in marriage will be our topic. Fighting in marriage. Oh, you want to fight? I'll give you one. Next week, question of the week is why do couples spend more time fighting than loving? Why do couples, married couples, spend more time fighting than loving? So feel free to communicate with us as you've been doing um, on our Facebook page. Go like our page, Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Our Instagram page, Marriage Monday with the King. At our Twitter is at Kenya and Shan. Or email us at MarriageMondays at MyKRGN.com. YouTube channel is in the works. I promise you it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us on KRGN 98.5 FM, The Rock, and we will see you all next week. God bless.